for coming on on this beautiful day. Uh, I think I know everyone by now, but uh, if you don't know me, my name is Fidel Maltes, and I am the new uh, town manager in Reading. Um, I am very excited to welcome everyone on behalf of the town of Reading. Uh, this is, is, is a project that is born out of love, out of love, out of effort, a lot of sweat, and, and, and a lot of community input. Um, I know that it, that it was it was a, a, a once a dream, right, a, an idea, and, and, and I know that it it took a lot of effort uh, uh, and, and a lot of uh, uh, teamwork to really bring this together. Um, I do want to acknowledge those present: uh, uh, select board member uh, Mark Doxer, Chris Haley, and, and Karen, uh, Karen Herrick as well, uh, as well as our town delegation. I'm sorry, our state delegation. Who is behind me, uh, and, and, and we'll be sharing a few words. Um, I also want to acknowledge uh, Miss Ida Matera Fitzgerald, uh, who, who, whose family obviously is, is tied to, to to the history of this land. So, on behalf of the town of Reading, welcome to this day, uh, and thank you to everyone who was involved in making this project a reality. Thank you. And thank you to Fidel for that warm welcome. And Fidel, thank you for your support throughout this process. Really appreciate it. It's a beautiful day to be in the garden. The story of the garden begins a little over a year ago when Reading submitted a funding request to our state delegation, which included some seed money, pun intended, to start a community garden. Just about a year ago, we got word that the funding had been approved. We were so excited. Since then, we've had community volunteers, we've had town staff, we've had gardeners working hard and consistently and persistently to bring the garden to the status that you see today. It's exciting to celebrate the formal opening of Reading Community Garden at Matera Conservation Area with all of you. The story of the community garden is a story of collaboration. It's collaboration from community volunteers, from town staff, from our legislative delegation, from the weather, all of the above. I'm honored to introduce our next speakers, who are our elected, our elected representatives. These guests were in on the beginning of the story, and they continue to be a part of the story. Our first speaker is the chair of Reading's Select Board, Mark Doxer. Thank you everybody for, for coming. Um, I will be very short and sweet. Um, it really is a lot of thank yous in terms of what's going on. It's thank you for the weather, which is spot on. Thanks for the opportunity to be out here Reading really is a community that has lots to offer to, to residents and to other people, of course. And this is a really great example of a start in terms of what we can do together. So I'm very thankful to our legislative representatives for making this happen in terms of the grant and very much to the volunteers who are all here and the folks that have been involved in this and are really enjoying it. What I'm seeing is, is a lot of smiling faces. I'm also seeing phase two, just to my right, <laughs> and other opportunities that can go from there. So again, thanks very much to everybody. Really appreciate this. This is a, a, a great start and lots more to come. Thank you very much. Thank you to Mark. I should introduce myself too. I'm Kathy Zeke, by the way. Um, I know many of you, but just in case. The next three speakers are members of Reading's legislative delegation. Senator Jason Lewis, Representative Brad Jones, and Representative Rich Haggerty represent us on Beacon Hill and we see them often at events in Reading. We'll hear first from Senator Lewis. Thank you so much, Kathy. I'm just delighted to join you all on this exciting occasion. I am, however, feeling way overdressed and feel like I should be in shorts and flip-flops. and flip -flops. <laughs> So, um, congratulations to the community. Um, this is a great example of a partnership between the, our state legislative delegation, the town of Reading, and many dedicated uh, volunteers and residents. 
And uh, we should note, Kathy, I think you said it's basically been a year. And people listening may say, wow, it took a whole year. Um, I can tell you that's actually lightning fast <laughs> to get a project conceived, funded, constructed, and cut a ribbon. Um, I just came from a, another project, which was a groundbreaking for a new school. That took 10 years just to get to that point. So this is actually really fast. Um, I know that in addition to growing um, healthy and or organic produce, this garden will also be a wonderful new community gathering space. And I believe it's also gonna support educational programming in the Reading School. So really glad to hear that as well. Of course, um, you don't get to a day like this without a lot of hard work and dedication. So I do wanna take the opportunity to offer my thanks and congratulations to um, my fellow members of the Reading Legislative Delegation. Um, Representative Jones and Haggerty, it's really an honor to partner with, with, with both of you on this and many other projects. Uh, current and former town managers, all uh, right, Fidel Maltez, thank you, wonderful new town manager, but also a shout out to Bob Lelesher, former town manager. Um, of course, the Climate Advisory Committee, the Food Pantry I know is involved, that's great as well. Uh, the Garden Club and the Conservation Commission, uh, the town staff and uh, community volunteers, and of course, a special thank you to Kathy Zeke. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, I know this community garden will be a, a wonderful asset for the, the Reading community, uh, hopefully for a long time to come, and will continue to grow as well. So we'll start working on some more state funding, another earmark for uh, phase two, right? <laughs> Thank you, Jason, and we will be ready for phase two funding. <laughs> Watch your inboxes. Um, Representative Jones, would you give us a few words? Thank you. Um, it's great to be here and walking in uh, to the property today. I was, saw Fidel and, and was talking about how great this is. And re remember back, um, probably more years than I care to remember at this point, but when this was a public-private partnership to acquire the property, uh, and we got some money from the state, uh, and I think we got some money from the late Nelson Burbank uh, to make acquiring this parcel uh, a reality. Uh, and now we've taken the next step, we've built upon that, again, with a public-private partnership. And I remember getting the email from Bob last year when we were doing budget requests and working with Rich, we were able to get the funding in the house and working together to make sure it stayed in the final uh, thing. And in turning a small request uh, into a successful endeavor like this, uh, and I think it's very easy to advocate when you have the public-private or public uh, partnership uh, and the community involvement. Sometimes requests come in and people say this is really important to the community and then people say, well, what is the community going to do? Oh no, we just want your money. Now you can visibly see that people are invested in this um, with maybe their financial resources, their time. Um, and thinking about this parcel and the garden and uh, serving on the, uh, the climate change conference committee that we're working on right now and the important uh, of land management, natural carbon sequestration. I see David Zeke nodding his head because he's a frequent email around these issues to me. Um, uh, and he's not shy and I appreciate that. Um, and thinking how important this is uh, from a community standpoint, an educational standpoint, an environmental standpoint, uh, and what a demonstration it is about how the partnership with the state and the municipality can work uh, to do wonderful and great things. So I'm happy to work with my colleagues. Uh, again, I think the original request came in, I think through Peter, uh, to acquire the property. The, the second request for the seed money for this uh, came in through um, Bob. Uh, so Fidel, you got, uh, you got big shoes to fill, buddy, all right? <laughs> all right, so we, I, I expect we'll have multiple requests. Although Fidel, quite frankly, you haven't been shy at all. <laughs> Not at all. Um, usually when we see him, he says, what do you got for me, you know, direct deposit. So anyways, uh, thank you, congratulations. Uh, and we look forward to phase two and phase three uh, and continuing this wonderful partnership uh, with the state and the town of Reading. So congratulations. Thank you, Brad. And we have that mention of phase two and phase three on camera now. That's okay. Okay, great. And let's also hear from Representative Haggerty. Thanks, Kathy. And thank everybody for being here today. <clears throat> this is a classic example of when a community comes together, we can do good things. And sometimes it's big things. Sometimes it's library projects and, and all the other wonderful things that have gone on in the town the last several years. Other times it's smaller wins like this, but they still make a real impact on people's lives and the ability to be able to engage with people in the community, with their friends, with their neighbors. Today we need that more than ever. 
So for me to be able to play a small part in that with our Reading delegation was really wonderful. I want to thank the select board for their advocacy. I want to thank Kathy for all of her work, all the volunteers who, you know, put on their overalls and came up here and made sure that uh, that they were able to get this accomplished and built is just a remarkable feat. So thank you. Uh, and then the benefits of a place like this beyond the community, whether it's nutritional value, uh, whether it's mental health, whether it's physical activity, uh, whether it's the educational uh, component, all of these things play a big part in, uh, in why we chose to support this and why I think all of you chose to support this as well. So congratulations. I'm thrilled to be here with you and I'm looking forward to coming back for the harvest uh, later this year. Thanks everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Rich. Jason, Brad, Rich, Mark, thank you again for your support for the community garden and for all things ready. We, we greatly appreciate it. For the last few minutes, I want to continue the story of the garden. We've heard the launch of it. You've heard several of the ideas of community involvement and steps that we can take as we continue to develop the garden as we've heard from our representatives. So I want to introduce some of the other characters who have been instrumental in getting us to where we are, and then do a little bit of thinking about where we may go as the story continues. Fidel introduced Ida Matera Fitzgerald. She's described this area as we've talked. She's described it as it was, and so you can feel the presence, the history around us. One of the stories that I continually remember is the story of your grandfather, Ida, bringing the grapevines from Italy. And that's one of the things that's on the horizon. We've marked some of the places where we see the grapevines and we're hoping to bring those back to life. So um, that's something um, that will continue and we thank you and your family. The Climate Advisory Committee suggested the funding request in the first place, meeting one of the goals of Reading's sustainability plan. So thanks to the committee and to Chair David Zeke for the original nudge. Since April of last year, yeah, I, I know in some, on some scales that's lightning fast. It feels like it was a really long time, um, so 14 months ago. Since then, a core group of volunteers who are kind of the organizing committee has worked very hard to bring the garden along. We've done a lot of research reviewed possible sites, met with town staff and town committees, chosen materials, developed a budget, designed a logo, thank you Celeste, um, and done a lot of physical work in the garden to be. Celeste Crocky and Simone Payment are both here. They've been in this work from the beginning and we have had two new members join this spring, Ellen Rockefeller and Deb Collins. I'm not sure that either of them are here, but a big thanks to both of them. Along the way, the Conservation Commission met with us multiple times for long meetings to develop the plans. Thanks to Anika Scanlon and the committee members for their creativity, the review, and yes, the approval of the plans. Many members of town staff, I see several folks here today, have been a lot involved along the way. Town Manager Fidel Maltez and his predecessor Bob LaLachure gave their support and encouragement from the beginning of the process to its current point. The Department of Public Works, led by Jane Kinsella, created the plans we worked from, cleared and graded the terrace we're standing in, removed unhealthy trees, put in the surfaces and the new granite stairs, be sure you look at the other end, ran a water line from the cabin for the drip irrigation, and brought in a lot of fill soil. The planning division, led by Jean Delios, kept us straight on the budgeting and the process. Finally, Conservation Administrator Chuck Taroni is our chief contact in the town and has been a cheerleader from the first brainstorming session we had long ago last summer. Thank you, Chuck, for your creativity, focus, and problem-solving skills. Of course, the group of 16 intrepid gardeners who have enthusiastically signed up for the first year of community gardening need a shout out. Several of them are here. If you just kind of identify yourselves, that would be great. They've all worked diligently, as in they have been here in heat, 
in cold, in whatever it was, uh, to do the physical labor that goes into building the raised beds that you see, filling them with soil, installing the drip irrigation, installing the fencing, and oh yes, they also planted these crops that you see growing. Uh, you also see, for instance, we've got a hummingbird feeder. We have various kinds of statuary and decorative kinds of terracing in the gardens. Um, so the crops are growing and they will soon be harvesting. And thanks to all of the community members who have volunteered time and muscles and equipment and word of mouth to spread the word about the garden. The story will continue in the next week, a group of us will add native plants to create pollinator gardens along the terrace that we see on uh, to my left. That's going to be a lovely pollinator garden that's going to have a winding path of bark mulch through it. Um, and we're also going to be doing pollinator gardens in the triangular space that's just off of the entrance from the entrance from Main Street. Then phase two and phase three, imagine. Imagine the ways the rest of this slope can be transformed to make this a community gathering place, to build in sustainable practices for crops that would help us with the food pantry, with our own um, crops for our own use. Imagine some of the things that we can do. How about some additional garden plots? Yes, we did have a short waiting list at the beginning, uh, at, at the beginning of this season as well as some ongoing interest from folks in being a part of the garden next year. Maybe some vertical gardening that could kind of frame the space, a rainwater collection system, a patio with a pergola for sitting and enjoying a warm summer afternoon, reviving the grapevines that Ida's grandfather brought from Italy and maybe having some fruit of the vine, uh, planting some new apple trees, the possibilities are legion and they're exciting. And it's really going to be fun to do some brainstorming, to gather some input and to come up with plans for what we want to do. In the meantime, we're going to enjoy watching the pollinator gardens develop and grow. Be sure that you watch for updates on the crops that are coming up in the raised beds. Now, with the help of the Chamber of Commerce, let's cut the official ribbon. Woo! Mm -hmm.